peace and black power, fam. This is your brother Sarnetta checking in with the family. I gave my beloved brother Bobby Hammett a call earlier, and the brother is sounding strong, and he is very happy right now because he has a strong woman beside him. For those of y'all who wish to make a donation, go to youcaring.com and put in the search bar Bobby Hammett, and his name will pop up, fam. All right, go and do that for your brother. He want to thank you all that had contributed to his, um, you know, healing process. All right? So I want to let y'all know that there's a strong black woman by his side. She goes by the name of Linda. All right? So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be digging in the crates. Let's go dig in the crates, Sarnetta, and bring back some classics. All right? And I found one 10 years ago. 10 years ago, brothers and sisters. And I'm going to bring that to you. On 125th Street, what was you doing 10 years ago? I could go back further than that. I'm just going to take it one day at a time. 10 years ago, Bobby Hemmings on 125th Street, live in front of the people. I've been doing this a long time. Peace and black power, family. Donate to your brother Bobby Hemmings. It is up to us to take care of our brother. Our brother has been sacrificing his life from his life on the line, going to and fro all over the world to give this information to the people. Now it's our turn. Are you going to let him down? Soft if it was ever a good time, that I could just roll the streets and never hold a beef, if there was ever a bad time. Just we just stick together, we could set a better tone on the streets I know the TV's right on time Ain't no masquerade, to no network games to play It be the new pastime It be the new pastime If it was ever a good time But we could just live in peace and didn't kill our peeps Ain't no more walking around blind Ain't no stopping, it's the consciousness that drop and help the people to see If we could live in the sunshine Without being a slave Free from all stress and hate Would that be the last time? Soft Meta TV Peace and Black Power family Here we go Brother Sarnetta digging in the crates Coming up with 10 years of information Brother Bobby Him and brothers and sisters Let's check them out And let's um, absorb this knowledge 10 years ago Peace and Black Power family Beat the Queen, this is Linda, the goddess from the stars. Is that the one you've been talking yeah. about, brother, bragging about? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Goddess <laughs> a power. <laughs> and, uh, you know, she's no joke, you know. Thank you. Know, thank you. Real powerful spirit, thank you. you know from the underworld, so beware. <laughs> yeah, you know, we back in town. Uh, Anybody got any questions? You know. Set it off. Set it off. Hey, All right. let's do this. Okay. Yeah. Bobby, you can find up loud too. Okay. Explain how oh, all people have been affected by homosexuality. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, those certain things just go along with Western culture. The Western cultures are asexual beings. So naturally, uh, you just put that as a form of the same aspect of the hells of North America. So my point here is this here. We have a lot of pathologies that we have gained out of slavery based on being a European culture. I don't think that you should look at homosexuality no more when it comes to black people. It's a difference. No more than any other pathology that you would look at, you know what I'm saying, um, that came upon our race based on, uh, let's just say, black self-hatred, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying, um, any, any other type of uh, pathologies that we have. I don't think it should be singled out uh, as something that is outside of what we all gain in North America. And I say that for a reason. I say that for a reason. Because you can go too far to the point where as you can look at some brothers and sisters as a separate entity. What we need to do is this here. 
You don't want to create a separate entity among your people, especially when you can have unity. And let me explain where I'm coming from here. Uh, in the 1960s, late 1960s, the homosexual community rolled up on uh, Kwame Ture. They asked him that they wanted him to head up this. They wanted to head up, uh, uh, help them fight gay bashing. He said, I can't help you. They said, why? He said, because that's not a part of my people's culture. He said, what do you mean by that? He said, look, and I'm talking about the gay bashing thing now, now, because I'm going this another way also, too. What I'm going to say is exactly what, what, what Kwame said. He said, we had a gay person in the, two gay people that we knew that was real big in the, in the civil rights movement. Uh, what's your boy name from, that was in Paris, the uh, poet? James Baldwin. James Baldwin and, and Bayard Rustin, who basically put together the March on Washington, D.C. You see what I'm saying? He said, but we didn't go after them as if they were the enemy. We put love around them because we understood that whatever pathologies we have as black people, we gain in the hells of North America. So I'm saying there's a way you got to look at this particular thing. You see what I'm saying? Now, let me give you an example to let you know what I'm talking about. When Martin Luther King and the rest of the civil rights movement knew when they was going to go down into Alabama, when they was going to go down into Alabama and Mississippi, they didn't know what to do. They had never, they had never challenged white folks in Mississippi, in Alabama. Guess who they had to call on to teach them how to go on down into Mississippi and Alabama and deal with white folks without getting killed. And I'm not talking about nonviolence, I'm talking about deal with them. This was before the nonviolent movement, just to come in the face of the white boy and deal with them without getting killed. Bayard Rustin, because he had done this shit in the 1940s. See what I'm saying? And he's a gay cat. So the point I'm trying to make here is you, you can't separate things out of a box. You see what I'm saying? Now, you, the question you asked, the question you asked, that particular question, it simply means that we must, we must put that down as the same as we do any other pathologies or, or ailments we had in this hell's of North America. And it should be added to that. In that particular case, that brother and sister can take their place amongst all other brothers and sisters that we got what we call in Niggas Anonymous. This, that's just one of the, you see what I'm saying? That's just one of the things. But you can't omit them, you understand what I'm saying, when we got the same kind of pathology. So you got to look at it on a bigger picture. You see what I'm saying? Uh, on, a, on a bigger picture. Now, as far as homosexuality in the rampant aspect of what's been going on in the last 10 years, and let me tell you, no, 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 I'm going to tell you what's happening. This has nothing to do with the gay person that you meet out in the street. Because you lashing at that, I'm gonna tell you what this thing is about. I was in Newark, New Jersey in 1996. Some brothers roll up on me and say, yo, we got four brothers we used to hang out with. You know, he said it was five of them. He said, no, it was six and all. He said, it was six brothers we used to have a little, a, a, little, a group. He said, three of them brothers is gay now, overnight. He said, so we know that there's somebody turning somebody into something. Now, how did that happen? That means that you have two levels of shit that you get right off your TV screen. Exactly. Exactly. Get the movie, get the movie Fight Club, how they can gotcha. take a snippet and put something in and it's a, a frame a minute, and you might see it, but you can't see it with these eyes, but your subconscious get it, because they don't put some penis up in there, and you don't know when they snip a penis up in there, and you watching a regular movie, and the next thing you know, you got some uh, fondness for some male. That's mind control. And it's coming from the TV set. That's the most powerful one. So now let's go, let's go a little deeper. When these brothers approach me in Newark, New Jersey, it's the rap videos. Mm. Okay. Now, it ain't got nothing to do with the rapper. 
What happens is this. We don't run the distribution. We don't run MTV, v, uh, VH1, BET, it's all the same. But what happens is there's two frames. They know when you see in Jay-Z and you see in all these naked women, behind there it can be naked men having origins. But you can't see it because you're looking at what's in the foreground. Now let me give you an example. Anybody know now that has seen DVD technology? You can buy one DVD with four movies on it, right? Or you can buy a DVD with two, two or three different types of alternative movies. This means that you will have layers. While one thing is going on, and you're watching one movie, there's another thing going on in between. So that, that proves that we talk about mind control. And the number one mind control is the TV set. Is the, is the TV set. So now, if they have dual layers, and you are watching one image, and up under there is another image, they, it, they have male origins going on, and all of a sudden, when you are looking at this stuff, and these things start coming down, and you don't know what's going on, you think you gay. That's why when I used to ask the spirit realm, is that brother gay? The spirit realm, is every person that was a homosexual, the spirit world say, he thinks he is. She thinks she is. Because they mean ultimately original man, you understand what I'm saying? An original woman, we all come in a harmonious thing. But in this hell's in North America, I say, well, why do they keep saying that? Because they're saying you are all under mind control. You understand what I'm saying? So they have things that's in the media that turn people into that. And you got to look at the mind control other than coming down on the victims. You see what I'm saying? other than coming down on the victim. So there's a lot of things that's going on there. You got to understand that. That's one thing. Give me some questions. I like to piggyback on yeah. that. What about when, I don't call them gay, I call them faggots. What about when the faggots start messing with children? Well, how do you protect the children? They're, they're adopting children right now. They're making it legal where you can adopt children. What about that? Um, you know, it's interesting here. Personally, I think that this is why all this consciousness came down in the last 15 years or more. So that we have a certain group of people that will get their people and get the cohesiveness of their people. Because some of these people you're just going to have to give up on. I'm going to tell you why. You're talking about a system that is too vast. You see what I'm saying? But sometimes we focus on, we focus on them and we never ever get the cohesiveness we need with the ones that's already conscious. It's so vast now, but you got to understand, this is prophesized in this hells of North America. You see what I'm saying on that particular aspect and all. So my point here is, is my, my concern at this particular point is you have to break that down to another common denominator. And that is, how can we protect the conscious brothers and sisters? You see what I'm saying? That's the difference. Because I'm going to be honest with you, the Goyim, those out there walking down the street, you protect them generally from afar. You understand what I'm saying? But you wear yourself thin out here worrying about these niggas out here and stuff because they will fight you to the end. So that means it's got to be a remnant. So now based on conscious people, you, you got the, the, your common denominator you see what I'm saying? It's coming into focus. But one thing, Bobby, faggots don't care whether you yeah, practice it, it, or not. Right, yeah, I understand they that. They hit but, on you. On but, 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 but what I'm trying to say is this here, though. But my point here is, in order to ward yourself off, 90% of the people that can somehow have some type of protection will have somebody that knows something that's going on. Have something. So you still, I'm just saying, I understand where you're coming from, but I'm just saying, there's got to be a point where as there's got to be a group of people that you focus in on. You see what I'm saying? That you focus in on. Um, you know, it's interesting, because, but you guess what? It's a, these are legitimate questions because you got to understand this. Let's look at this. Going again, a lot of pathology. I'm in a room full of women in 2001 in Indiana. I'm the only man in the room. 
It's about 30 something women. So the court came up based on molestation, rape and molestation based on in the family. And only two women in the whole damn room did not have an experience. So I'm talking about when you look at these things, we're talking about you got to look at this thing as a culture we live in exactly. and a broader culture other than singling things out. There's a lot of shit across the board. So there was only two women in the room. And I said, well, damn, we didn't even get to the children, black boys right, right. and black girls. We're talking about some sick people. But it was prophesied, the messenger prophesied it. And all the scriptures prophesied. And I'm not even talking about biblical. I'm talking about all the ones from the Egyptian hermetic uh, uh, scriptures, the Nag Hammadi Library, and even the Book of Enoch. There's several of these scriptures. So I was even surprised on that. We're talking about one out of five. No, five. Let's say, let's say, four out of five molestation. We're talking about some real shit that it is going to come down under the hills of North America that is taboo in our community because we don't talk about it. We're the ones that don't talk about nothing because it's taboo for us to talk about certain things. You see what I'm saying? So therefore, we can't ward off nothing. A lot of older people say, homosexual, that's some new shit. You ever hear old people say, where did they come from? Mm -hmm. That means that what you got here is you have a you have a whole culture that suppressed certain things, which has given rise to what is, is the down low male. Now the down low male is a person, and you gotta understand the psychology behind the down low male. The down low male, <coughs> whenever it has a sex act of a of a gay sex act, it will say, I am not gay psychologically. If I do engage with a male, it's like going skiing. That's something that I do and I can put away in a car. This is the way they justify this shit. You see what I'm saying? And they were and in their mind they don't believe they're gay. They just think, well, oh we okay, I will go out there and I, I will have this thing that I engage with a man, but I'm not gay. This is just some type of act like going hunting, going fishing, like bungee jumping. Thrill seeking, huh? So you, but you got a lot of down low males. Now breaking this down, you see what I'm saying? It's a, it's a, it's a rampant culture, what you're talking about here. And there's, there's pathology stuff that we don't even talk about. First of all, in order to wash something off, you got to discuss this shit. And in the black community, everything is taboo. We don't talk. You see what I'm saying? We don't, we don't discuss certain things. You know, so these are some, these are some interesting things. I, What's that, brother? Some people say that. Hey, man. Some people say that. Yo, talk up, man. Some people say that. Some people say to people, like, it's okay if gay people, faggots, and it's a lot of children. Some people say it's okay, but oh, well, what, do this think, what, do you, what do you think? What do you think about? I understand that that's what that was the question I was talking about based on the conscious community. Laws are set, and they're hoping that the dead folks will enforce these laws or make this thing flourish. That's what I'm saying here is the conscious community is the only one that you can focus on at this particular time. As far as however you're going to go about this thing, as far as focusing on this thing based on adoption and all of that, you got to understand something here. What we don't understand here, you got to look at this thing because you want to fight this war to win it. You don't, there is not a national consciousness. America is a continent. That's what we don't understand when we get in our little corner of the world and be talking about black people per se and these type of things. You got to look at this thing on a bigger picture. America is not a country as people think it is, America is a continent. It's a continent of North America. You understand what I'm saying? So there is no national consciousness. So this whole concept here, of, and the government already knows it, or we gonna get something done, they say these assholes don't know they live on a goddamn continent. And in a continent, you could have 100 countries in one continent. Right. Well, your state is your country. If you didn't learn nothing, you learned that you can go across state. Anytime laws vary based on states, 
then we don't live in a country with national consciousness. We live in a continent and we have pockets of consciousness. So the whole concept here of the whole, uh, of the gay adoption and stuff like that, you're not even just talking about cross state lines, you're talking about cross county lines, borough lines. You see what I'm saying? So you gotta look at this thing on a bigger picture of this generalized thing that black people are here in one monolithic mindset and our problems are the same. You got people in Arizona, you got people in North Dakota, don't look like black people as far as sound like, the vernacular, the mindset is totally different. Right. It's, it, it's, right. it's vast than most people think it is. Right. You got people in Northern California that don't even know what you're even talking about. Yes, this is alien to them. Exactly, yo. So when you think of these things here, and all the reason why we never get nothing done is all, because we don't understand the country that we live in in the playing fields. It's bigger than what you think it is. You, and when we run up on this, we be like, I don't understand why these brothers and sisters don't, are not this way. It's so vast. So Brother Hammond, do you mm -hmm. think this is part of the divide and conquer mentality? Oh, oh that, that, that also, what's, the, yeah, hold on one minute, she had a hand up, what's that? What you saying about the gay adoption? Huh? What you saying about the gay adoption? Yeah, she said, the question is, what are you saying about the gay adoption? I'm against it. Okay. Goddamn right, I'm Bobby. against it. Huh? Look. No, no, look. Answer the question. Hold on. Listen, not only, not only that. Listen to this. Not only that. Even if you get into the philosophical debate, you gotta also get into the psychological debate. Anything that makes a child confused is a mistake. No, no, but, the, but, okay, now, okay, now let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Now, even if we make the argument that you got two gay lovers and you all do, and the child does not end up being confused. That's not the, that's not the, that might be an exception, but not necessarily the rule. So, but wait, the folks got, the, the gay folks who got two straight parents, where did they get confused? No, 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 what, what, what the point I'm trying to make is this. That's what, there's only one problem though. What's the problem? There's only one problem though. You gotta understand the country that you live in, no, number two, it. and you, you got, you, you, not only do you have to know, oh, this isn't, no, wait a minute, hold on, ma'am, you gonna get, let, let me give you, no, let me explain to you. Look, I'm not gonna even all day. What I'm trying to tell you is this. What I'm trying to tell you is, the confusion I'm talking about here, if you got a general culture that maligns and vilifies, stigmatizes people, based on certain lifestyles, then you got a child, don't tell me if a child has to go up against that compared to going up against something else. But if the child is black, he got to go up against he, that's that. That's what I'm trying to say. Another, so my point here is... Another so, problem, man. So my, po is, my point here is, is this here. No, no, no. It, 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 hold it, on, it, brother, hold on. What? You are now making it seem like gay adoptions and not only in North America. And that's... No, no, no. no. So, we're talking, so I no, don't no, understand no. what you're saying. Wait a minute. We're talking about, we're talking about what's going down in the policy of North America right now. We can't help what's going on in Peru. This well, is let's fucking not Harlem. Let's not generalize. This, this is I Harlem. Mean, we're not, general, people. No, people we're not generalizing. I, 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 I gave you one continent. I said it was a big continent. Now, I can't jump. If, it, uh, if a continent is too much to deal with, I know damn well. We can't be talking about something in Brazil. Right, we did. But hear what I'm saying, yeah. though. You, you made a point about, um, no, no, this actually yeah. was you who made the point, yeah. who said that's one more oh, thing to deal right, with. Right, right, right. My, my thing is because we live in a society that yeah. their, their ideas are all crazy and right, wrong, yeah. it doesn't mean that we then say that we're going to do it crazy. So because we're black, we can't change the fact that we're black. So we're going right. to be proud and be black right, and yeah. deal with yeah. the problems as it comes. Yeah. So if someone is gay, they should be proud right. that they are gay and deal with the okay. problems but, and wait but, and wait but, the people but, up. But, who, hold on, no, 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 hold on, no, hold on. Hold on, y'all, chill out. Yes, no, still yet. No, but that's all I'm going to tell you. No, let me explain something here while I'm saying you got to sound crazy. No, 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 wait a hold on now. Hold on, hold on. Bobby teaching, man. Hold on, hold on. I get the answer for that, too. I'm the speaker. Now, my point here is what this sister is saying is this. You still can't deny this sister for being a goddamn human being. You see what I'm saying? I understand where you're coming from based on the ideology, but this person is still standing right here in front of us today. That means we got to look at a bigger picture. She's, they're not going to not be, stop being gay because you don't agree with the shit. Exactly. They never you understand what I'm trying to say? No, no, listen, I'm, I'm trying to say this here. Yes. My point here is that you got this. Look, we can argue all day long about what is, but what we're trying to say here is it ain't going away. Because you don't agree with it, it's not like that person gonna say, 
Oh, uh, you cannot produce a child. Let me tell you, you're right. So my point here is this. My point is this is now. What I'm talking about is just say personally, be honest with you. Personally, be honest with you. I really don't care what you do in your personal life. I, the point, mostly, what I'm talking about here is we must understand where the government is going with this because they set a certain amount of policies because they have a certain amount of agendas. And so we need to look behind the agenda. Even if you get into the argument, it might be an argument that they want you to engage into because they want you to look a certain way at a certain situation because this still has disharmony. Yeah, but here what happens is when governments produce and, and, and manipulate certain kinds of agenda to produce certain outcomes. And folks fall into their reverse psychology on that. Like, okay, the government and you are saying the same thing. Gay adoption is wrong. No. Y'all saying it for different reasons, but y'all no, saying listen, the same listen, thing. Listen. Yes. I'm coming from a cultural standpoint of view. Now let me give you the cultural standpoint of view. Break it down, break it down. Because we, we didn't have, we, it, uh, when we, because we, that's by, I come by way of culture. This is what I do. All right, and so you, if you want to get a person that, to deal with some other stuff, you need to go find those particular people. Now I'm talking about based on culture. We didn't have to deal with this in the culture. That's right. Because that particular that's culture correct. meant one thing. No, I'm going to... Wait a minute, now. hold on, hold on, back up. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. No, 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 Sister, no, 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 debating you all right then so i'm trying to tell you based on a cultural thing i'm telling you my book listen listen now based on the cultural thing let me give you the cultural aspect of what they did on the continent this is a very uh, uh interesting information the soul that comes down is of one origin when you incarnate you might have an incarnation where you are where you're female, you might have an incarnation where you are male. The Africans are the ancient ones understood based on their rites of passage that they could get that particular person and they could train that particular person and they could they, they could take that particular person and they could and, and, and based on the culture, that person would go into the body that was conducive or his soul would fit the body in, 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 which was conducive in which the, it incarnated into. Okay. They had that type of rites of passage. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? They had that okay. type of rites of passage. Thus, these problems didn't arise on a mass level. We don't, you see what I'm saying? So the point I'm trying to make here is this here. On a cultural aspect, we must look at those particular things. We were talking about people understanding that you could master the particular body that you incarnate into. And they gave you rites of passages that could master that. Now what has happened here is we live in a, a, in a, in a civilized barbarism where the rites of passages are broken down. So we got things bouncing around all over the place. I'm going based on the cultural aspect of it. Now you can do what you want to do and all that. I'm listening to me, baby. No, but baby, I will, but let me just put it this way. You can accommodate all you want. I'm just saying this here. If you, if you and your lover, I'm, whatever, raise somebody and they come up beautiful, well, I applaud you. But I'm talking about when the government gets into stuff, they have another agenda on why they do it. And all I'm trying to say is we need to look for that agenda. That's why I raised the issue of uh, when you said yeah. that the country is, uh, right. is so divided. Right. Country, county, state. State, so right, 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 right. Behind it, so you yes. think this is all premeditated as yes. a yes. part of yes. the conquer mentality? Yes. That is the number one goal of the government every hour. That is the number one divide and conquer is the number one role of the government every every every, every hour. You see what I'm saying? You know. So only thing I'm trying to say here is this here. I don't get into the personal thing of what you do. All I'm trying to say here is always understand when the government makes policies. Yes, sir. You understand what I'm saying? It is for its subjects to be on the bottom. And you must rise above what you feel sometimes to understand maneuvering strategies that we are always in warfare. So with that said, then, who really is in control? 
Huh? Who, is real, who really are the controllers? Well, for the, for the masses, they're being controlled by the European powers. Make no bones about it. Let's digress off. Whatever they are, they're not people of color. Right, yeah, okay, yeah, go ahead. What's that, brother? Oh, well, I'm going to get into a whole other subject mm -hmm. dealing, with, right. dealing with comedic science. I want you to be able to explain for us the, the term of Saku Shetis and what's the responsibility for Saku Shetis in this day and time. The what? Um, Saku Shetis. Um, I'm, I'm, what's that? Like Saku Saku. Give me, give, give me uh, an example. Cause it's supposed to be like more or less like a... Uh, like a priestly teacher. Uh -huh. Like a priestly teacher, and what would be the responsibility as a teacher coming from a righteous um, coming okay, from a yeah. righteous position in the yeah, world? Yeah. What's, his, okay, respons yeah, what's yeah. his responsibility in the society? Yeah, that's that's this this called, one is called a priest king, one is also called the uh priest messiah. It's the same uh the same teacher, it's the same concept. I understand what you um un understand this. A lot of times what we think of as righteousness and morality is totally different than what the ancients thought. Exactly. You got to understand this. You got to understand. You walk up on the Twa people and call and say, your mama's a son of a bitch. The little pygmy or what you call a Twa might laugh at you because they don't grasp the concept that this is supposed to be offensive. Yes. You understand where I'm coming from? So I say that is because a lot of times, when we talk about the priesthood and when we talk about certain things, we always are basing it on moralism. And your moralism might be taboos of somebody else's culture and might not register to you. Right. You understand what I'm saying? The biggest thing you can do down here in, West, in, in Western culture is to kill somebody or somebody die. Whereas in ancient culture, Death was looked on as an attainment. That's right. Give you an example. You get a mass murderer. He go up and kill up a whole bunch of people. No, the Western society with their ego, they don't go and lock him up in the jail and put some pins in his nuts and say, you're going to suffer for uh, 30,000 years. Mm. They kill him. That's the greatest thing you could do with a person. They have released the spirit. And that particular person in actuality got the key because he had to get out. He got up out of here. Whereas the brother's the one that's sitting in the prisons rotting. So my point here is these particular, when we talk about this particular righteousness and particular thing like this, there's a difference because we, we, we are beyond the, the, the first inception of this, a noble true Ali, uh, honorable Elijah Muhammad and stuff where we had to teach the people the basic fundamental aspects of righteousness and morality. You see what I'm saying? To function in the society. Right. Now what is happening here is the conscious community is falling behind because you all too much trying to do the damn right thing and the right thing is based on somebody else's concept of what is right. You see what I'm saying? Of what is right. So you gotta also, you gotta go beyond that. You gotta unlock the doggone mind. You see what I'm saying? What is righteousness? You see, now the ancient person, when they talk about righteous, you say, well, I see it in the scriptures. They didn't mean righteousness based on your behavior. They meant what was right, puh. You know, like you pick a fruit off a tree when it's ready and it's right. So they were talking about the alchemical functions inside of the body and the mind. Then they were talking about how you behave. Mm -hmm. You got plenty of dead people behave good, moral. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? It don't mean shit. You see what I'm saying? Bad things happen to good people every damn day. And good things happen to bad people all the time. Do you got the shit, case in point, the white man. His, he ain't never failed to pull up to the plate for deceit, but his children live better than you every day. And ain't nothing in sight coming to unseat them until you understand it ain't about what's righteous down here. Because you're looking at this based on a modern concept, based on the ancient concept. Give me an example. When we first got back up in the Kemet, the first thing we did was we say, well, we need to find a Jesus. Oh, that's Osiris Horus. And we need to find the devil, which is Set. 
Because here it is, we're taking modern concepts, we're taking modern concepts and putting them into, and putting them into ancient concepts. And that's backwards. Now, so we said Set was the devil. Well, why is it any time you see a Pharaoh in Kemet, he's standing between Horus and Set? You see what I'm saying? We're talking about polarities of energies, battling for supremacy. Everything down here is based on polarities of en energies, and it really don't matter what you do down here, even if you got to slit your own child's throat, exactly. if it calls for that shit. Because moralism ain't got nothing to do with it. That's why the Book of Law says, sacrifice a small child, but not now. I say, what does this mean? Why would they say something like that? But then I stand understand the concept. Everything down here might have a certain occasion that it might be a certain season for it. For sure. You see what I'm saying? For sure. A certain season for it. Yes. You see, so you gotta, you, you, we gotta go beyond this particular concept that this thing has got to be one way. Now, let me give you an example. Because there's, a, there's this discussion going up with the Black Panther Party versus metaphysics. Now, I've said this back in 96. If the cracker busts up in your house, you need to have whatever you can to get that motherfucker up out of your house. All right? So my point here is, here goes again. There is no one way to do nothing. Everything might be relevant. You understand what I'm saying? Now, let me give you an example about warfare. We know there's physical warfare, and we know there's spiritual warfare. Yes, exactly. But let's look at Geronimo. He was in a physical war kicking crackers ass, but he had a spiritual blue rock. And they worked hand in hand. And they could not defeat him. He had to give himself up. All right, so here we are talking about this here. All we're talking about here is balancing this shit out. Yes, sir. If you end the revolutionary on the physical thing, incorporate your spiritual aspect. And if you are a spiritual aspect, don't let no cracker come and tap you on the head. Be ready to kick somebody in their ass. Also, too. That's right. You see, so it's got to be a balance in this particular thing. Now, the reason why we know that is because they got the group that's in South America. No, in South Africa, they made the movie Zulu Dawn. And they fought the British. And they killed the British. But they was on a spiritual high. You see what I'm saying? On a spiritual high. Case in point. A lot of stuff happened in Vietnam in the battles. They can't win. Just like they won't be able to win in Iraq. You see what I'm saying? Win in Iraq. You see. Those are warriors right there. Yeah. So it's... it's Messiah. It's a spiritual aspect. It's a, it's a spiritual aspect. We see this. We see this. We see this in the spiritual act of sex. Anybody ever been having sex and it got rough? Yeah. But while you was having it, it wasn't rough. Kind of vibe, but the man. next morning, you be like, "Damn, I'm so as shit." That means you went on a plane that was above the roughness. So what? Now that's sexual kung fu. That's real. That's real. I'm gonna be talking about that tomorrow. I'm going to be talking about that tomorrow in Brooklyn. At Long Island University at 3 o'clock. Now, the cabin Flatbush. The point I'm trying to make here is we argue on things and we come away empty because we don't understand that you can incorporate all of these things. And you see what I'm saying? And we only look at the apparent, so therefore, if we see in the apparent and our situation is there, sometimes we can't look beyond that particular situation. Give me some questions. Brother Hammond, yeah. What, yeah. Is the key for, uh -huh. what is the key for unifying our people? I mean, that's like an age-old dream. Yeah, okay. Something we want to happen, but it seems so elusive. Uh, what do we do? Don't look for unifying your people mm -hmm. is the first thing to make this thing work. That is something that... That is something that somebody put us into. It's like the black leader. Nobody has a black leader but two people on earth. Black people here in America and the Palestinians who both have something in common. 
a secret society called the Jews that making sure certain people don't rise. They got our fat, and we got a multiplicity of ones that come every so often. You don't even know what the leader is of the Puerto Rican race or the Mexican race. So here it is again, the whole concept here, like I said again, that's almost like wishful thinking to think that people on a continent again can be unified. You know what I'm saying? We talk about oppressed people. I've heard people go, black people go, who is oppressed? Exactly. Exactly. That's real. You know what I'm saying? So the point I'm trying to make here is I think, the, and, and I understand the love because you're looking at the apparent. You see people that look like you and you want to look out for their well-being. I don't understand the concept of that by us being spiritual people. You see what I'm saying? But that, that concept here, we must ask the question outside of that. Now, the, the question is, in the physical realm, based on physical civilization, is it possible for us to be unified? No. Why? History even tells you that. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Now, ult but you got to look at the bigger picture on what we're talking about. Ultimately, will we be unified? Yes, but it's on a whole other level of a spiritual level and beyond our present situation. So it's beyond the, is it beyond the physical body? It's beyond the physical because the physical, <coughs> the physical is disharmony, harmony, period. You see what I'm saying? Is this how many period? Plus, my point is this. You ever thought about this? What is the most evil country on the face of the earth? America. America. Now, that means if America's slaves were brought up to the level of other groups, there would not be a person here that could charge America with the evil that it is. Hell, right now, you can't convince black folks that this shit ain't good. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Right. We suffer because it's right to suffer. You say, nah, I don't want to hear that shit there. But why is it that the Jews try to corner the market on suffering? That's right. Like they and they own, own everything. They've always owned everything. Okay, right now. You see what I'm saying? Here it is the people trying to be us. And they see the benefit in us and in in our plight. That's right. That's right. You see, now I'm not talking about no Sunday go to meet and preach your stuff about when I get to heaven, I'm going to put on my shoes. But I'm trying to show you on a bigger picture. You fight wars battle by battle. You see what I'm saying? We're all in a perpetual aspect of struggle, and that's how those particular things end up. Give me some questions. Yeah. I got, I got, I got. Let, yeah. Let, on, let's let's dive. We yeah. talk about pathology, right? You yeah. Said homosexuality was one. Yeah. Religion, another one. Yeah. Is there a religious conspiracy involving Eddie Long, Preflo Dollar, and T.D. Jakes and the rest of exactly. the Exactly. Exactly. Evangelist. Your your network is a government entity. Okay. And those particular preachers, uh, as far as just about all of them under 50C31 are set in place to keep the masses and keep the indigenous folk down. This is in the Illuminati handbook. You know, cult technology of power it tells you that our greatest tool out of all bombs, mind control, uh, any type of scientific thing, our greatest control, uh, tool to control any indigenous people is religion. That's right. Yeah, that's right. You see what I'm saying? That's right. Is, 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 is religion. Organized religion. That's right. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. So why are we so much in fear? What happened to the black power? What happened to our power? I mean, psychologically, we all in, well, we, we, we are sleeping giants right now. Ma the majority of us. Yeah, the masses. The masses are sleeping. Yeah, the masses are, and the masses continue. Yeah. So, I mean, what's happening to us? It, here goes again. Here goes again. 
When you look at the general culture, not even just black folks, white people, they're the same people. 9-11 told you that. They could tell these white people anything in the world and they believe it. And I was shocked. I, me personally, I thought white people had better sense than this. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I didn't know 9-11 taught me something. This shit here is an epidemic. You understand what I'm saying? Didn't come to find out the average black person has the edge. They be like, oh no, something fishy about this. Because we don't we, we've seen a side of America that got kicked us in our ass. So the average black person from Alabama be like, oh, I don't know about some shit like that. But white folks are totally oblivious. Yeah, man. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I'm I'm amazed. So my point here is, is it's not just black folks, it's white folks. Now let me tell you something else happened too. They made protests in the 1990s something to look, be looked down upon. So when you have people protesting and they get the mainstream white folks out of protesting because they're the ones that the country follow, then when you out here protesting, you look like a fool because they have made protests some type of uh, a vilified type of social pariah persona non grata. You see what I'm saying? So therefore, you dumb down a culture to just not even think about nothing but their own bread and butter. Yeah. You know, well, you know, it, it's... I mean, so a lot of talking, but we ain't doing, we not doing a lot of walking. I mean, we need some more. Well, I'm trying to say, look, here goes again. 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 Bring your sights down to the ones who are functional. That's right. We do a lot of also crying people who are asleep and dead. And you see what I'm saying? I care nothing. It's, they told you that on, on Queen of the Dam. She said these people know nothing. They don't want to know nothing. You see what I'm saying? So you got to understand it's, it might be cold hearted and callous, but the other thing keeps us distracted because if we follow behind everything that happens to a black person we'll be falling behind some crazy shit every hour because a nigga got some shit every hour you know what i'm saying and they choose these things to get us into into the debate about you know uh, get us into this particular debate you know so i'm just trying to say here is Never look at the apparent. Always go to a bigger picture and stuff like that. When I say that, I'm not talking about cliche about uh, um, something religious because that's a joke. You know, that's, that's a joke. You know what I'm saying? Huh? Yeah, huh? Yeah. Now, it's imperative that we have a third world war. That's coming. Yeah. Uh -huh. you, you know that. Yeah. Right. Here's the deal. Most of the strong white nations gonna line European wise because I listened to some shit in Canada yeah. the other night. Right. You know them white kids ran to Canada and the Canada president said, fuck the United States. Mm -hmm. right. We down with France and, and Russia. Right, yeah. You ain't coming up in here and taking this kid out right. here. Matter of fact, all them soldiers need to run away. Right. So this shit is born in bushes saying, well, we sticking to the aim. We got business. Cause as you know, that was a plan from Reagan back. Right, but here's something. what's going on though. I wanna know this. They gonna bring the black draft back for black kids. We know yeah, that. Right, right, right. What we gonna do? Right. What's, where we gonna fit in, in that whole okay. schematic? Okay. Um, they're gonna bring it back. Um, not only that, we're talking about this thing, this ice melting from under our feet daily. Now, let's look at this thing on a spiritual level about this. They gotta pick a war to fight. They losing the shit from Iraq. That's right. Okay, that's, right. that's handling itself. They getting kicked in the ass. And uh, uh, you know what I'm saying. Now, the war at home, the third world, the war at home, we will win that. Now I'ma tell you something. Farrakhan said this one time in 1985 at the Power Tour at Madison Square Garden. He said, do you want your slave to come to war with you in the streets? He said, because if we come to war with you in the streets, we will win. 
Now, in 1985, I could not understand what he meant by that. Now, the guy Carol Quickly, America's secret establishment, whatever, said that the only hope that can defeat the Illuminati is the urban black person. Now, let me give you an example of what I mean by that. They don't want these niggas. The only way you can pe get these black people out here to wake up is to give them no hope. That's right. And bear down on their damn community. That's a good thing. Because if the damn tanks start rolling, niggas will start waking up and white people in trouble. Now, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example of what's going on. They deregulated the, the, the gas companies down in Atlanta. They're doing it all over the country. Uh, they cut off 3,000. They cut off 3,000 black people heat in the city of Atlanta. They cut it off. It started getting winter. It got to December and it was still 75 and 80. The federal government had to call down and say, you better cut them motherfucking black people gas on or we ain't gonna have no winter and we ain't gonna be able to sell in no Christmas and winter will be lost and our finances will be fucked up. That's because there were so many black people that didn't want it to get cold. So they changed the shit and it was December of 75 and 80. So if you get that many black people conscious, nothing. The atmosphere will change and guns and bombs and none of that shit will work on these Negroes. <laughs> so they don't never want us to come together by them rolling the tanks in. So that's what they do based on dividing and conquering. Because they know if we come up in some doggone consciousness, and they best believe, because when the tanks start rolling, you got a question to Jesus and all that other shit when the tanks start rolling in your neighborhood. They swim around, and they don't want that to happen to these black people. Because you do have some strong black people that sleep. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of their magic they use for white folks. Now, it's so, so, so we, it, we in a great situation on one hand. On one hand, they know it's inevitable. This shit is coming down. Exactly. Now, they got to keep on with that old bullshit over in Iraq. They, can't, they ain't going to never be able to get out of Iraq. You hear me on this. I, I told people this last year. They will never be able to come out of Iraq. Never. That's Northeast Africa. That was, my, that was actually my next question. That's Northeast Africa. They'll never be able to come out of that. That Tigers and the Euphrates is real. That coincides with the Nile and all the rest of the stuff. All that's Northeast Africa. That's right. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Now, what is the persistence with the White House and, and its objective with foreign policy? What's their persistence? Because we got homelessness in America. We got uh, unemployment and everything. But it seems like the White House... So what's, what's their persistence? What's their out there? As long as, look, they don't worry about you and the homeless and stuff like that because they don't give a damn about you. They give a damn about the Mexicans. They give a damn about the Mexicans because the Mexicans is the new Negroes. That's right. I, I said that years ago. You see? That's right. I said that years ago. And they will work. You see? And so as long as they got the Mexicans, they ain't pretty much worrying about no shit. You see what I'm saying? You know, hell, they got slave labor. That's the only thing they, they worry about. So, uh, the other stuff across seas... Yeah, what's their persistence? Why are they so focused on out there? They're focused based on that, based on something spiritual. Yeah. Based on spiritual. I know, but kind of break it down. It has nothing to do with no oil. It has nothing to do with no Saddam Hussein, because he worked for them. And he's still working for him. He is someplace in some resort somewhere chilling. When they wanted to catch him, they called him up and told him to get in the hole. Remember, man, all this shit is worldwide wrestling. It's fake. You see, now, it's fake. It's fake. It's worldwide wrestling. What I'm saying is this. They are talking about something spiritual in that part of the world a certain amount of gateways and a certain amount of things, you see, that's happening at that particular place in that particular realm. And 
one of the main things they wanted to do was get in there and get a certain amount of artifacts out of the museum. You see what I'm saying? Out of the museum. Because for some reason they figured they could go and get some of these artifacts out of the museum. They got all the Egyptian shit. And every, you know, they got, uh, you know, so that was a part that was left untouched. And so they, they figured if they could get in there and get some of these artifacts, it might be able to save them. They said the Holy Grail is in Iraq. And uh, uh, save them. It's actually over here and in us. Okay. Yeah. Iraq is, is a, it is a sign right. of power that they're looking for over there that is over here. Right. Among us. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Um, among us. You see, but this is just a way that they, 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 they're trying to, they're trying to, they, they're reaching for shit. Yeah. They're actually, it's in, they're in worse shape than what they think you are. They always tell you that they will make you think that their reign is forever and they'll be shaking in their boots. This is a, a question uh -huh. in regards to how, you yeah. say, how you're saying it's a spiritual thing and you like what they're trying to do. Yeah. Would that also be how the skull and bones of Bush and Curry and how they started out with the Russell Trust and they had Geronimo's bones to, man, to have yeah, the yeah. energy of the red man here? Well, yeah, so always, could it be also that they want the original man's power? That they they always are into religious? some type of getting, uh, they always are looking for somehow to get on top of kind of power on the planet. Right, yeah, right. That's their number one thing. So they went to the museum and got the original man's bones uh -huh. and they gained power and sway through their sacrilegious Well, ritual. they thought that they could do it. They reasoned for shit. Although, in theory, they think that these artifacts can save them or can give them, it's not in them. It is in the genetic structure in the alchemical aspect of the ancient man. You see what I'm saying? So it's inside of us. Right. It's inside of the bloodline. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. It's inside of the blood bloodline. What about these devils dealing huh? with extra? What about these real people that's dealing with extra-ritual information and knowledge? It doesn't matter. They have all this information because they were supposed to be our. They, in so many words, we were sweet. Is somebody on the planet, they are good people to gather up shit and dissect stuff. They were actually working for us. When they time is over. Huh? It, they, have, they have had this particular information for the last 150 years and have not hit a lick out of damn snake to make one convert to the spirit realm. Let me give you an example of how I know that they are scared and they're running scared. These organizations, the OTO, the Golden Dawn Society, all these, the Theosophical Society, they are now coming up to black conscious people in group and trying to befriend you and endear you so you can go and get into the society and do research and give up them, give them your secrets. They're looking for you to save them. Because since 1990, they, handed all this stuff over to the white children, they can't do it, now they're coming for black people. So now you're gonna get more and more secret societies coming up to you saying, hey, look, we will pay you for research. And they're trying to pick your brains of what's coming up out of you spiritually. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, Bobby, can you speak on the sister who really wrote the script for the Matrix? You know something about that? Yeah, I, yeah, uh, uh, she said she wrote about the first, the first Matrix. The first, she wrote the script based on the first one. Um, like they steal everything, you know. So that goes with what you were just saying. Case in point. Yeah. Case in point. A uh, lot of contests, a lot of entry, a lot of things they want you to enter. It's the same thing they scar. They they uh, 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 are looking for your ideas. So a lot of that has a lot to do with all that. Yeah. Ex mm -hmm. Explain the the, the uh, relationship between global warming because we know the Caucasians have been paying close attention to the sun yeah. and the melanin and why is global warming so important to the Caucasians? Um, Get down. Uh, as far as the planet is concerned, um, the global warming, everything that you see out here mm -hmm. is being affected, uh, is, is in effect based on something that's coming inside of us. So we are bringing about those particular cataclysmic things that's going down and don't know it. He says, let me give you an example. 
They say that California was supposed to have been in the damn ocean 10 years ago. They've been talking about California being in the ocean for the last 40 years. But California never seems to get a little earthquake and stuff, but it never seems to fall into the ocean. That's because they got a certain amount of black people there to keep that shit up. You see what I'm saying? And their energy keeps certain things up. You see what I'm saying? They know this. They know this. Okay. Mm -hmm. is, yeah. there, is there any truth to the 2012 phenomenon where people say that? Uh, my be honest with you, um, I don't ascribe to that because the simple fact is this. The calendar is so off until this shit is way beyond. You remember in the Matrix, he said we don't know what time it is. It's like more like 29 something. That's how far away from that shit is. I mean, even the Japanese, if you just take the Chinese calendar, hell, it's damn near 2012 on their shit, and theirs is a calendar that is behind. So if you're going by a Gregorian calendar in the 2012 thing, that's fucking 2001, the millennium. And it was, the, remember now, that everything was the millennium, the millennium, the millennium, and all in the, in the 80s and the 90s. Then they went to the millennium and did his 2012. That's the white man trying to get some extension. Exactly. This shit is going on as we speak. They are in Iraq. They blew up that building on time, God damn it. They didn't blow it up in 2012. So that whole thing is off. 2012, even if you had the Mayans to calculate that, they weren't calculated based on this calendar here. This calendar here, even the Dogon uh, 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 did, uh, uh, did, did their signature ceremony 10 years ago. And they are, you know what I'm saying? And they got their knowledge from the Egyptians. And all of the calendars that we have studied ran out 10 years ago. You see what I'm saying? You know, all, just about all of them. So, that whole thing, what's that? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's real easy for them to do with the heart program to have machines to control the weather because you can control the weather in your own mind. That's an ancient science that ancient Africans and the Native Americans and indigenous people used to control the weather in your own mind. I can do that any day. And most people can do that. So yeah, they, that's, that's a lesser science, but they do have the heart program with all of that. And, What's the significance of the, these colorful northern and southern lights that we have been noticing recently? I mean, Is it little star looking things? Sort of greenish, yellowish northern lights. That's the Aurora Borealis yeah. that they talk about. Do you see an effect on, on, our, on, on us? On our At this particular time, yeah. all of that stuff is to be equated into stuff that should happen. Wow. Nothing is outside of this thing that we're dealing with right now. All of that is supposed to be studied and focused on. The Aurora Borealis. Anything that you wanted to global, all that stuff is corresponding with some stuff that's going on on the inside of us. On, questions, on the, questions. What do you know about the planet Nibiru? Nibiru. Nibiru. Nibiru just means Neb Heru. That's the original thing. You see what I'm saying? Nibiru, everything, this is the way the ultimate people in the occult realm understands this thing. Never, ever, ever, ever track anything from outside of yourself. That's only something that is, that is a backdrop from something that's going on inside of you. The, 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 the Nibiru is nothing but the coming and the opening of the pineal gland. The Nibiru is nothing but your soul. Is what that is. The Neb Heru. Heru is nothing but the third eye and the soul. So I always shall track this stuff. It's inside of us. We are the Nibiru. You see, that's why, let me give you an example. The Nibiru was supposed to hit on May 15th, 2003. They released the Matrix. They had a, an eclipse that night and stuff like that. But they were looking for something to happen physically. And you know, we, we get on these things, uh, uh, that, that, that these, these events, and they, they come about, but nothing ever happens physically. That's because those are things that's happening on the inside of us, and we're thinking of stuff that's happening on the outside. So, what did happen? May 5th, 
we, had, we got this transmission of these seven entities came. Ishtar, Monu, Noku, Mana, Titi, Jova. But when you look at it, there's supposed to be seven Ishtar, seven Hathors, the, the, the seven holy reaches of the Pleiades. But when you look at it, there's seven major chakras. So in so many words, what the, the Nibiru that's supposed to come that day and they had these seven entities was nothing but seven components of the chakras opening up inside of you, us, but we don't know that we're already advanced. Let me give you an example about being advanced. Anybody get cut lately and the shit be healed up in about a day or so? Anybody experiencing yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why is this? Mm -hmm. You know, it might take you two weeks for something to get healed. If it's, but now you can get cut, burned, or anything, and it heals up within a matter of days. That means your molecular structure is changing. The stuff that's going on inside of you is just that you were programmed to think that you're the same person from 75. And you are changing already. You see what I'm saying? This year more than anything, 2004, you will think of a person and the person will call your ass. Yes. Mm -hmm. you, we call yeah. it talking someone up. This thing is happening more and more. You can, not only that, you'll be riding with somebody and you'll think of a thought and the person will say your thought. Yes. You've been getting more and more of this now. That's the same thing like when you be singing a song in your mind. Yeah. And the next thing you know, you hear that song jump right up on the radio. On the radio, or oh, 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 oh. someone humming it. Yeah. That's the synchronicity. Mm -hmm. That means that we are, there's things that is happening and we are more advanced than what we thinking we are. Yes. You see? It's just that you keep thinking that we're just the regular people and they got you focused on the shit that they want you to focus on on that news. Right, right, yeah, right, 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 right. Instead of right. not focusing on yourself. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Right. And that's what's actually happening. Yeah. Question. Is there any truth to this? Question. Okay. Yeah, what? Um, I need to um, ask you, um, I want to know what was the whole behind last year's blackout? Okay, yeah. They are, they, about a month after the blackout, they all blamed it on Ohio, the right. energy plant in Ohio. Yes. Okay, in 2001, off the coast of Florida, this black water appeared. You know, in all the papers and all the internet about this black water. Yes, sir. Now, and, and it's supposed to be the off of the coast of the Florida Keys. By when I went to Cleveland and, and did a lecture in Cleveland in 90, in 2002, they had the Black Waters in Cleveland. They got it in Cleveland. They got it in, off the coast of Texas, uh, 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 the Gulf of Texas, Gulf, Gulf, Gulf of Texas, the uh, Gulf of Mexico. They got it in the Great Lakes region of Chicago. You see what I'm saying? And they got it in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. When I went back this fall, the paper say, people say it's interesting. They say that they had a, a team that they flew in specialists to go out and survey this black water. And it just so happened that the day that they went out to survey the black water, the blackout came. And they, uh, uh, the blackout came. Got it. <laughs> yeah, the blackout came. See what I'm saying? So. It was something that happened spiritually. But this is the most mysterious thing, and I'm trying to figure this one out. You had a major blackout, and nobody looted. <laughs> now, somebody got to be under mind control, because they had the same blackout in, in 77, and every store was looted. I'm still trying to figure this out, and it's got to be mind control. They had a major blackout, and they didn't have no break-ins. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you something? Yeah, but as, far as, as, far as, as far as mind control, do you think that hip-hop, as it is demonized now, this gangster rap, is one of the main uses? Of uh, a huge That's influx. A, yes. a huge one good is mind control. Yes. A, 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 huge, a huge one is mind control. How can we get rid of that going on in the out uh, with us? It's not well. You got to realize this now. You you know, the day they had a survey yes, sir. that the, all of the 1990s right. that what kept the music industry alive right. 
was white children buying hip hop. Yes, I remember that. So really, it's out of our hands now, cause they don't even need us no more. <laughs> the white kids is taking that shit and run with it. It's a, it's a bigger phenomenon than, than just us. It, it has its origins in the, in the ghetto, but it is a, a another phenomenon now. Um, only thing I can say back again is the only thing I can say here is strengthen the underground. Right. So my point is, no, now, so, yeah. Now, what I mean by that is not just go to the underground music. You got plenty of underground music, but we don't strengthen it. Exactly. Exactly. And just disseminate it ourselves. Exactly. It, let me tell you about when the, the Wu-Tang Clan did it when they came out. Yes, sir. They knew that the, 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 the that the, the, the uh, regular companies wasn't going to help them, so they strengthened it. Yes, sir. And they got all this shit out with distribution their way. Right. The government looked at that and gave them contracts. Right. And took it away from them. And took the strength away exactly. from them. Exactly. It happens every time. It happens every time. Sure? Yeah. No, no, no. Heavy D and the boys did it back in the 80s. Right. You see what I'm saying? Hell, Master P with his crazy ass Master did the shit. Right. So my point here is it happens every Four or five years, somebody from the underground coming, it's a major phenomenon, and then the first thing happens is a major record company step in and take the power away. You got all these damn people down here that we know that you can do it because most people buy bootleg shit off the street. So if you can buy bootleg shit off the street, you can buy, you can strip in this stuff through the underground. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, uh-huh, yeah. I have a problem. Yeah. Gangster rap and stuff like that. But when it come time to war, are we gonna be ready? Huh? Uh, when it come time for war, as we as people gonna be ready now, I yeah. got a problem. This My son just way. got arrested, hold on, for a gun. Didn't have no clip. His first time, 15 years old, they put him in us. Huh? And this guy was up in the Bronx. He got caught with all kind of ammunition in his house. Right, yeah. He get a $5,000 bag. Right. He go up for half of that, it's 1500 Yeah. Like, make me understand why. Because when it comes to us, I'm like, when we going to start doing something? That's when right, stuff keeps on constantly I, happening. Well, I'm going to tell you, this, but I, think, I, think that you, I, I think that you can incorporate something else. Let me explain something to you. Let me explain something to you when I'm saying incorporate something else. Yes, you can protest, and yes, you can go by the means of the government to try to do some things. But there's all kind of magic that we have that we used to do in Mississippi, Alabama, South Carolina. There's all kind of shit you can do. You see what I'm saying? I, I had a friend call me in 2000. His son got caught at the damn Canadian border with a car full of every kind of drug known to man. And we got through the, when we got through with the magic, they took the car and the damn drugs and told them motherfuckers to make it home on foot. Well, nobody gave a damn because they was free. My point here is, is there are alternatives a lot of times, and we don't use our magic. You go go and, and pray to Jesus. <laughs> Hell, <laughs> that's every nigga in prison is, 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 is up under Jesus. You see what I'm saying? And our lives just as fucking bad. Religions. Now, oh, oh yeah, all I, yeah, but you know the Muslims, can, you can go over there right now and see, because when 9 11 baby hit, <laughs> we saw how much power all I had. That white man kicked that damn Arab in the ass all day long. But don't, talk, don't worry about it because black Muslim and Arab religion is two different animals. But it don't matter still yet, but still yet, for the mere fact that no, but, but, but the thing about it is here, I don't give a damn whatever. The way you worship Allah ain't doing shit for black right. folks either. Nothing. Nothing. What's called that is like jumping from the pot to the frying pan. Yeah. That's right. That's right. You know. That's right. And uh, you know, it's right. stuff right. That's right. Yes. Right. Hell, they taught the white man how to enslave. That's right. That's right. Yes. The Arab slave trade taught them how. They didn't know half the stuff until the Arabs taught them. They was in the slavery for a thousand years before the white man got it. Ain't no Arab come over here and try to help us anyhow. Right. Five hundred years. Yes. Some of the common uh, duo that they. That too. This is you're coming back to them. That too. So yeah. Because they had their hand in on the shit too. Yes, sir. And we revered him. What about the mindset of the African man that comes here and looks down at us as a piece of shit? Yeah. That's right. That's right. Okay. Right, man. 
Okay, okay let me just, nah. Okay. That's true. All right, now, nah, okay. When you look at the Africans, never look at this shit based on genetics. We all the same people. When you're looking at the African, you gotta look at him to find out whether he's French, whether he's British, whether he's Arabic, because it's not the African per se, it's his mindset. Those are not Africans, those are the French. Those are the British. Those are the Dutch. You see what I'm saying? You gotta understand that. You see what I'm saying? So you, so you gotta understand the concept here. You got to understand the concept here. There's principalities or whatever mindset it is and try to understand that it's not genetically the Arab. You see what I'm saying? But it's socially and culturally somebody else mindset. Bobby, how about yeah. this? And they will use them as the new uh, 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 Koreans yes, or whatever in the community. Yes, now, now, in that right. same vein, yeah. we're talking about Black Muslims in Africa. With the Arab, right. now we know in that the history of Islam that 80% of their armies were African men yeah, who, right. who, who pushed this religion forward him. Yeah. But in this day and time, the Arab would tell you that he owes no allegiance to Africa yeah. or any black Muslim right. African country. Yeah, Africans still bow down to these either, either through, through some political aspect or religious aspect. It's all the same. For sure. You see what I'm saying? It's all the same. New uh, questions. You questions. see, yeah. Questions. Give me, yeah. I want to ask a question regarding, is there any truth to this polar shift theory? I mean, with the global warming and the uh, glaciers melting? There, at this particular time, look to all of that. There's a good book called uh, Arctos, The Polar Myth, by Jocelyn Godwin. It go into all of that. All that stuff has a lot to do with it. It's called Arctos, A R K. TOS, The Polar Myth by Joc Jocelyn Godwin, or G-O-D-D, -D no, yeah, I think it's G-O-D-D-E-N, G-O-D-D-W-E-N, The Polar Myth, but it's called Arctos, The Polar Myth, and all of that stuff coincides, you gotta look into all of that. But remember now, all of that stuff is happening based on the genetic aspect that's inside of us. The molecular change that is on the inside of us. We are running this shit. We just don't know it. And we do stuff haphazardly. You see what I'm saying? And pay attention because fucking is the key. That is the gateway to the other side. Now, I ain't talking about procreation. I ain't talking about having babies. That's the low level. The procreation is the low level. That's the that's that's the low level. I'm talking about the sexual tantric level of how you rumble the sheets. It affects things on on on, on other side of the world. It affects change. Why the hell you don't have right now? If you open up some sex shops right here, they will come and they have the preachers and they'll lock you down. But yet you can go up the street in the white neighborhood and they got sex shops. Because what you don't realize is that shit is important. Eroticism is important. Huh? Let me explain something to you. No matter how much somebody done trained you that some shit is negative, there's something more powerful called Eros. That's Eros. That's the baby Jesus that you know in, in Christianity. That's Cupid in Rome. That's the... The, the, the baby Horus in uh, uh, Egypt, that's the baby Buddha or the baby Krishna. That's an entity that's inside of you, an energy that's inside of you. And no matter how much you tell yourself you Muslim or you divine, yo, one night you laying in the bed and you get horny and ain't shit that bullshit religion can do about it. Why is that? Anybody tell you that anything that you do outwardly, you see what I'm saying? A lot of times, is the lesser level. It's the inner self that is the higher realm. So here's some stuff that even if you're so righteous, that shit gonna come up. You gonna get horny. Or you have gotten horny before. That means we're talking about a cosmic force that's on the inside of you called the Kundalini energy. 
The Kundalini energy and the sexual energy is the same. The same, exactly. You see what I'm saying? And based on that particular energy and how you rise that particular energy is how you control. So aren't you catering to the lower? No. No, listen. See? Listen, I'm an expert on this thing. Now, oh no, you talking to the master on this now. You now, no, babe, no. Let me explain this to you. It starts everything you do start from the root chakra on up. It has its origin in the root chakra, the gastrointestinal tract. That's where the soul is, and it travels up into the Kundalini energy. Tapping into the eroticism is how you. Go into the divine. That's the tantric level. If, if you did them with sex, you have to have a point of origin. Now, if you are trained that that is negative, you cut the energy. The tantric level. You cut the energy. There is a point of origin. It starts from the lower. That's where the gateway is. That's the red chakra. Huh? Yeah, I mean, because you can get you stuck there. Perverts. You listen. Perversion, perversion has perversion has out. nothing to do with sexual energy. Perversion has something to do with the society, and it has something to do with the suppression of sexual energy. Right. Why you think your priest is fuck boy? Because they right. were told they couldn't fuck. That's right. That's right. Why you think your priest? The Catholic preachers little fuck boys, because they was told they couldn't fuck. That's right. That's right. That's true. That's that makes right. sense. Too. Energy, when you bottle energy up, you, you make it a disharmony by not yourself, dealing with the natural flow of things. Right. Can I ask you another question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but by, but by not having sex, right? Or uh -huh. uh, not having sex for a period of time. Uh -huh. Can't you redirect that energy into a higher spiritual? Now, what it is is this here, look. Now let's deal with history. The celibacy shit comes around a certain time. And a lot of that comes around when a lot of the priesthood started breaking down. If you go back to Kemet in India, you see the lingam, which is the penis, and the yani, which is the vagina, all over the place. You started getting into the celibacy and aspect and all of that. It's a part of, that's a form of perversion. A lot of that has also to do with organized homosexuality. Right. Right. Organized homosexuality right. and stuff like that. Horus and Osiris. If you want to get the embodiment of Osiris and Horus, a lot of the material is gone. You have to go to India and get Shiva. It's the same thing. That's how they rule. Through the sexual energy, the kundalini energy. All I'm saying is a lot of tantric information on that. It's rarely, when you deal with the art of tantra, rarely do you see the celibacy stuff that you see in later day priesthoods. That's Islam. That's too late. That's Judaism. That's too fucking late. That's too late. When you start getting into the male dominated religions, it's too late. That's the reason why the male-dominated, why it's male-dominated religion? It's a male chauvinist, murder cult, a homosexuality, organized homosexuality. That's right. That's why your God is a he, which don't make no sense at all. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Right. And the only reason why it makes sense because you was taught that. You see. But I'm saying on the tantric level, when you study the tantric level, you you rarely see anything about celibacy. That's papracy. That's papracy. Now you can conserve your semen and don't give up your semen because when we're talking about the sexual tantrum, we, we're not talking about necessarily ejaculating all the time. You see what I'm talking about? Orgasm is not ejaculation. The de ejaculation is the, is, 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 is the loss of fluids. Orgasm is the sexual pulsation that goes up, you know, and the problem is, is we have, at Western males, we have been taught how to ejaculate, but not to uh, orgasm. And orgasm and ejaculation are two different things. 
You see what I'm saying? Two different things. A woman has an orgasm, but she doesn't have a, 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 a the, the, the sperm come out. You see what I'm saying? Remember you gave uh, a lecture where you yeah. were saying that they were shooting? Yeah, yeah, the that's, a diff that's, that's a vaginal secretion. Okay. You know, that's a whole nother realm. Okay. Yeah. So explain how the male can ejaculate. Huh? Explain how the male can ejaculate without losing. Well, first of all, fluid. if it, it's one thing. If you just take the, it, it takes about a year. But if you if you go into sex with the focus mm -hmm. of not coming, mm -hmm. sooner or later you will reverse the training. Whereas most of the time when you do it, the only time you come in is, is when you have a mass come build up, mm -hmm. but a build up. But usually you can retrain the mind that you won't come based on it's only been taught that way. It's all coming. Sex comes off the brain. So you can deprogram it by whenever you and, and you, and you start with the technique of going but so far and then pulling back. So you're going to have to have a, a mate that is understanding what you're doing and pulling back. And after a while, you will reverse it. You, you will reverse it. I do, I do it all the time. I have reversed that particular aspect where I don't come. I, I might come once a month, but I fuck every day. It yeah. and you feel more powerful. Right, yeah. So you can reverse that, yeah. You can reverse that, yeah. We tell, all right, mm -hmm. biblical text now. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Explain how the Caucasians, how and where the Caucasians got the idea of, of Adam, or the first man. Well, that, that didn't come from him. Adam, you get Adam, you get Atum. Okay. Now, you're talking about the mythology. Yeah. That's weakened down. But the Adam comes from the Atum, the Atom. The molecule. Okay. So there's a scientific version which is ancient. Then that, then that that particular story is just a Hebrew version of the story, which is in actuality a uh, edited version of the story. An edited version of the story. Even when you get the um, even when you get the all right, when you get the uh, expanded Hebrew text, they go into a lot more than what it is when you come into the creates the story of Adam and Eve. There's a whole section before that. There's just a lot more study. And all the biblical version is just a, a is just a, 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 a edited version of it, a summary of something of a greater greater mysteries. Of, of greater mysteries. Question, question. Yeah. Do you yeah. know who really controls Jehovah's Witnesses? Huh? The organization? Do you know anything about it's it? It's a European uh, uh, a group uh, that control it. I mean, it's... Um, it's still a form of mind control, just like all organized religions are. Um, especially anybody come knocking on your damn door on a Saturday. You know that's mind control right there. You know what I'm saying? But all of that, um, you know, hell, uh, 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 Jehovah in, in, his, in his real Hebrew form is feminine. It's feminine. You see so, what I'm saying? So we, we got all these movies coming out, all this propaganda, mind control coming out. Yeah. Like, what are some of the movies that, that are out now that strike your attention, that, that, that have massive uh, 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 mind well, control? Well, I always, oh, oh, well, 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 The Passion of Christ. OK, break that down. Well, I mean, you know, that's just basically, basically, um, every 10 years, they got to show the European Christ or every 10 to 15 years on the screen. You see, on the screen. That's why the first person to...